Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough, where we only deploy female soldiers and, for the first time today, a freaking robot, because robots are famously, well, uh, female in this case. So uh, let's see what we're gonna do today. So today we're gonna go on Operation Hot Plate, where we need to protect a device, and I don't know why my voice just went all over the place there, but we're gonna take Jacqueline, Lena, Spark001, Kelly, Heidi and Christina on this mission but first things first I still need to do one more thing well two more things actually I need to go to build items and then we need to buy some things because in the weapons we can upgrade the gremlin to mark 3 so that improves the healing capacity and the damage healing capacity of said gremlin um, and then we can also upgrade the weapon of the spark or the uh, body of the spark and I think I can only do one since I don't want to have this thing huh you know what I could actually upgrade it to the reinforced frame first like this so we have a little bit of reinforcement and then go for the Illyrium phase cannon so the uh, plasma version of the uh, weapon that the spark unit uses so there we go that's basically all our money gone and look at that, he looks a bit uh, a bit fancier now, and his, his uh, spark bit over there is freaking out as well. But, there we go, with this team we're gonna go on Operation Hot Blade. And we're dropping into lost infected areas in the ruins of Bogota. Which is gonna be interesting, I feel like this might be uh, a bit of a tougher mission. Um, we did bring Christina along to deal with to lost if we need to. Nearby. We need to lock down the area and secure the device at all costs. Even the mech is concealed. There are significant readings indicative of the lost moving throughout the combat zone. Be careful out there. I don't know what just happened to the spark. Can we select her at for a moment? So we did get like a sort of wall. Is that basically a shield wall that she can do? Wait, uh, let's check that. So, Shredder. Your Illyrium face cannon attack Shred armor. Nice. Arsenal, the bit can equip and fire heavy weapons. Okay, we've done that as well. Mechanical chassis. This unit is immune to fire and poison damage. And we can do remote hacking. Okay, I think there was one more ability. Yeah, overdrive. What is that? Take three actions this turn and no action is turn ending. Multiple standard shots incur a small recoil penalty. Okay, so that is really, really good damage dealing wise. Um, so let's head out with the spark unit first. This thing is quite a bit away. And I feel like since we don't start there, the aliens will already be there instead. So uh, moving up and I'll see you guys in a second. So we have increased detection radius. So I'm just gonna put everybody on overwatch and see in the next turn what we'll uh, be able to do. Because I feel like these uh, the Lost aren't going to be our main focus here. Yeah, see, that's going to be more of a problem. So they're going to start firing at the Lost, which is fine by me. Because if they kill the Lost, then I don't need to. And then he misses. Great, Mac, you had one job. Okay. That's going to be problematic. So they're already firing at that thing. I don't know how many hits that thing can take. Doesn't seem like it's that sturdy though. And the loss did basically nothing. Okay. So that means I should probably get in there. There's nothing I can do to uh, make this any easier. So I'm just gonna put uh, Christina over here, get her spotted, and she can finish off those losses with a pistol. Which is fine. And we got a lost brute over there as well. So those three I can take out with a pistol. Um, and even with the pistol I could technically go back into shadow if I wanted to. But let's start seeing what we can do. So I do three to six. Huh, I thought that was higher with this pistol. Well, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Let's just go with the lightning hands first. There we go, 6 damage on that one. Then take one over here. 
There we go, that's also a kill. And then we go for the one in the back, hopefully also 5 damage. Because if that is 5 damage, then we can fire another one at the one in the back. So there we go. That's Christina Schultz in one go. Then we move up with the Spark unit. Ooh, I love the voice. I would love to be able to change that to a woman's voice, but uh, I'll have to see about that in the option list options later on. Oh crap, okay, I spotted the ones on the left there. With Heidi. I mean, it does give us a little bit of uh, an advantage here, I think. And the loss are gonna come closer, but... I think this is a good choice to use my blaster bomb on. I can just move that around here. I think like this should be fine. That's not going to take out the Lancer over here, but it's going to wreck the mech and uh, remove his overwatch, which is what I want to do at least. So there we go. I don't know if lost rules count here. It might, because I'm using explosives. And there we go. So that's two lost down, overwatch removed, shredding on the mech and a kill. Oh yeah, a loud explosion draws a lost swarm closer. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just gonna... Can I rend this guy? I think I can, right? That's nine damage and I do eight to nine damage. Maybe I should try and weaken that thing first just a little bit. I'm gonna do this. That's affirmative. There we go. That's going to be... Oh, crap. Okay, well, at least we're getting them distracted. <laughs> Ooh, Nelly. Ooh, Nelly, Nelly, Nelly. That is going to be problematic. But 100% on the Lancer and a 94% crit chance. I would love to do a dual strike on something in a second. I'm going to have to see. But first, a normal shot. 94% crit chance. This, sh this should kill him, right? There we go. There we go. Okay. So that gives us... That's really good because that gives us uh, both implacable and... Um, yeah, implacable and untouchable. So if I put Heidi over here afterwards, she's going to be able to uh, slash the trooper. Oh, yep, yep, I get it, I get it. But Heidi's in the front there, so she's fine. Okay. Then, we also still have... Huh. But I'm gonna hit uh, hit somebody else with that if I want to try the Shred Cannon. Um, so let's put Jacqueline over here. I don't think she'll be able to do something useful here unless... No, she can fire at the trooper, but that's just a waste because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to do a sword slash on him. I could try and kill the brute, but what I'm going to do is use rend on the brute instead. And that should hopefully maybe please kill it. If it kills him, I get parry. Yes, okay. Rend damage increase. I think I get parried nonetheless, right? Because of just using rend. Um... And then I can just parry every, everything else. Oh, Christina is in a really bad position, by the way. I could fire again with Heidi. That's basically what I'm going to do. So let's give Heidi another shot. You have the power. There we go. She remains. She keeps that um, implacable thing. So what I'm going to do instead is do rapid fire on the Archon or on the... You know, the Codex has really bad shots. Uh, ults. So let's just do rapid fire on the Archon. Yeah, double shot on the Archon. Ah, the first one is a miss. Come on, Heidi. There we go. The second one is a grace. Okay. Wasting a lot of ammo for basically nothing. And it goes into Battle Frenzy, so didn't really gain anything there. The EMP bomb, how far does that go out? I could hit... Huh. I could hit the Codex with that, and that should kill the Codex, right? Is a Codex, does a Codex count as a mechanical unit? I think it should. 
So let's... Uh, although I do know there's another sector pulled in this uh, in this match as well. So no, I'm just going to put it on Overwatch. So let's see what happens now. So the mech is going to move. Do I get a blade storm? No. But I do get a cannon shot from Jacqueline. And that gets 9 damage. Ah, that's going to hurt because he's going to use explosives. He's just not dead. Yeah, he's good, just going to fire explosives at us. We're too clustered together. And that's going to shred all our armor. Okay, and then we do Blade Storm on the trooper. That's fine. That's what we expected to be able to do. Good I'm being oh, why? Why? Why did that happen? So those are that's two sectors and an Archon. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. It seemed like we spotted them, but I don't think we did. Now that is interesting to know that they're at the other side of that thing. Uh, I think we're gonna get Bladestorm, right? Yeah, there we go. It's not gonna kill him, no. 11 damage is not, not, not gonna be enough. But now he's just gonna try and kill uh, Heidi, which is gonna do nothing. Because she's untouchable. But then of course the Codex, yeah, the Codex is gonna do uh, the bomb. Yeah, the psionic bomb. That was to be expected. The psionic bomb just on Lena? And a lost swarm appears. That's not too bad. I can deal with that. Depends on where they're coming from. Uh, can you please focus on the aliens? The aliens over there, can you? Oh, wow. There's a lot of them right next to the objective. Uh, are they going to focus on hitting those... Uh, the sec Ooh, I saw the sector pulled in the back there, so the sector pulled is right at the objective. So we're gonna have to be careful, I can't just open up the uh, the walls there. And because of the explosives, we lost all of our cover as well, so... I think it's time to let Heidi go wild, to be honest. So let's enable Reaper mode. Let's start with the Lost over here. So we slash um, from over here. So that's the first one. Going down. Slash. So remember we lose damage output every for every hit we uh, perform. So let's just go over here and slash this one. There we go. So 9 to 10. So now we go to 8 to 9. Then, next slash is onto the Archon. Let's put it in a good position to go onto the mech next. There we go. Archon down. Then, next up is the mech. The mech is going to suffer a tremendous critical failure in his uh, mechanical yeah, hardware. That's that. And then, the final one. I don't think we'll be able to hit somebody from here. But I can move up to the corner over here and see what we can do next. Let's put it behind this pole okay. over here. Now we can start to move up. I don't know how much... Ooh, I have a pretty good shot on the, uh, the Kodak. 72, if that hits. Let's try that. There we go. 12 damage and it's down. Okay. So that means that we can move up with the spark unit as well. I hope I don't spot anything just yet. That's going to be outside of the circle, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, Lena should move out as well. But I'm going to try and move out in a way that doesn't spot anything. So let's put her over here, which gives her full focus immediately. Which is going to come in handy in a second. So there we go, full focus. And I should be able to turn one of the uh, the other guys into a ghost. Uh, probably take one that's pretty close by. Yeah, let's take this one that's right in the middle of the psionic storm. Live again through me. And because of all, all the lost count as humanoids, so I can just resurrect any of those. There we go, a full focus ghost. And then we can normally move that one around already. Yeah, there we go. So we can move that one around right next to the corner over here. She might get hit, but there's only two positions she can get hit from. So I'm not really 
curious about that. So let's see if we can take out some more dashers before we do anything else. So fire with the our first shot with the spark. There we go. That was glorious. So free action. We can do that again on the one in the front there. And that gets us another hit. Uh, and I equipped an auto loader on the spark unit, so I can just keep firing if I want to. I can. I have three reloads anyway. And that's a miss. That's fine. That's fine. So let's move everybody else up, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so for some reason the Lost took decided to start focusing on us instead, which is annoying, because the aliens are of course closer, so I was assuming they were going to go for that. And we miss a uh, cannon shot. Which means that somebody's gonna get hit. I don't know how far they're gonna focus on. And we get another shot with Kelly because of her abilities. And she hits another one. Because of Guardian. Do we get hit? No, of course. Bladestorm kicks in, so that's not a problem at all. Okay. Seems fine, we're taking care of the lost, but the frame rate is dying, so I'm gonna have to move up. Oh, nope, okay. Lena does get hit. Now, um, the lost are not the main problem, of course. There's something really, really bad in the next room. Well, a lot of something's really, really bad. And, um,. If I want to deal with that, I'm going to have to take a look what the situation is exactly. So let's move up and see what happens. I'm moving up with the ghost, of course. Oh, wow, the frame rate is just going. The frame rate is going. Yeah, there we go. And we spot everything else in the game. So the final six enemies. Menace 1 5, we've got a line on the target. Move to protect that gear at all costs. It's at half health. And we spot a sectopod, a mech, and a purifier. And of course the two sectoids and the Archon. So that one goes into Overwatch. The Archon starts waking up and they start spreading out a little bit. I'm just wondering what the range of my uh, psionic storm is at the moment. Hmm. I could of course start rending. To give them another target. Because I can easily take out a, a sector or something like that. But I'm going to have to be careful. I mean, one big... Psionic Storm. Where's the other sectoid? There he, there he is. One big Psionic Storm over here in the corner. Would, would that take out... Most of these guys... Seems like that gets blocked, but... So if I fire the Shredstorm cannon like this, I both hit the mech and the sector bolt, and I hit one lost along the way as well. I don't think I hit anybody else. And I take care of quite some cover, which is also very, very nice. So let's do that right now. I don't think I hit anybody of in my team, but... Lomo. Okay, so that takes out quite a nice chunk of the sector bolt. Um, I could actually... I think Christina has... Oh, she can't see the sector bolt from over here. That is too bad. Because otherwise I could have used the blue screen rounds to uh, get her going there. But sadly, no. I could do up to 15 damage with the Ionic Storm, and I can do that on two enemies over here. Or, move that Psionic Storm over here, and take out a bunch of Lost, together with a nice chunk on the Sectopod. I feel like the Sectopod is still the most annoying enemy to deal with at the moment. I also take out the Sectoid in the corner here. So, I think this is gonna have to be it, because if I move... Aha, wait. No, I don't think that hits the uh, the other secto sectoid anymore. Oh, this does. Let's try this. I don't know what's going to happen. Because um, normally it generates focus on kills. So I don't know if the ghost is going to survive. And if it's going to get that focus from the psionic storm. But we'll see. This might kill like six enemies. 
And there we go. That was 14 damage on the sector pulled. I don't know if it gets it doesn't see, no. No. It doesn't it doesn't get the uh the focus, so that's fine. Now, next up is gonna have to be the spark unit. The spark unit actually shreds armor as well. And I can enable, I think it's high time that we enable that overdrive thingy. Uh, so let's do overdrive. No action is turn ending. And we get three actions. There we go. Overdrive. Then we go over here, which is the closest that we can get. Overdrive. Overdrive. And then we fire at the sector pot. 86 with no crit chance, but at least we're gonna get uh, a nice hit in. Or not. Yeah, indeed. I think you do, do need a targeting diagnostic. God damn you. And now all of a sudden we have a less aim. Oh man, that is bad. Okay. Definitely. Um. How much? Oh, I still need to do way too much damage on that thing. Ah, we still have the combined shot, though. So if I put Heidi over... Over... Yeah, I'm gonna have to put it over here. Moving to designated position. There we go. We got a... No, no. No, no, no. 80% shot on the Sectopods. Um, I could try to use Kelly first to turn that into a better shot. I'm putting everybody out in the open here, which is not good, but, uh... Yeah, Kelly over here. On my way. And then we can... I could do... Ha, huh, wait a second. How much damage do I do with capacitor discharge? I don't have that... I don't have that, so let's just do a dual strike on the sector pulled. That should kill it. That should definitely kill it. There we go, that's a hit. And then we get the shotgun blast, which was also 80%. And blammo. There we go. And it's gonna blow up the loot, of course. Ooh, loud explosion. Again. Um, I do get... Ooh, yeah, of course, because I can still fire. I still have three more shots in here. So might as well just uh, shoot. There we go. <laughs> that was really aggressive. Uh, and then that one. So all the, the high level dashes I need to uh, take out first. And then I can move along. Oh, I can actually move. That is interesting. So I can go over here. That should Moving make me a little bit of a target. I can even move further. So that's not a free reload, but I can still use the sword, right? I might as well use the, 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 the sword then. Um, let's use the sword on the on the Archon, because I just don't don't care at the moment. So slash. There we go, Blade Master. But she is untouchable normally, so she should be fine. Battle Frenzy, and then we get one more shot at the Heavy Mac. 50-50 from all the way in the back here. Might as well try. If that kills it, that kills it. Ah, oh, we miss. Okay. That was a Toyn Call, so not really that much of a problem. And now, if I rend... Aha... Uh -huh. If I rend... Ooh, I should probably rend that lost. Although, what is that lost going to do? Not that much, I think. I could kill the mech. Guaranteed. I don't know. 8 and 9. And the Archon has, of course, 9. So I don't want to risk that. So I'm just going to hit the mech with rend. You will pay the price. And that's going to allow us to parry her as well. Giving us two units in that area with immunity. And there we go, we did only 8 damage, so that's uh, great. Generate another focus, and then we go into defensive mode. Parry. 
So he's gonna try and hit her. Oh, Bladestorm, yeah, right. <laughs> Never mind, Archon dead. He tried to move, the dumbass. So the only possible problem is that the Sectoid tries to mind control. No, nope, untouchable, buddy. Untouchable. No, 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 no. Untouchable. And then the Purifier is gonna try and do some uh, fancy flaming, I assume. Okay, a Lost Swarm is very close. But I feel like we only need to take out a few more enemies. Uh, we have armor on the spark unit, so yeah, it even misses. Fair enough. Loot expires. I don't care about just those psionic thingies. So now all we need to do is just take out that last lost, I would think. Unless the swarm appears right now. It doesn't, which is good. Um, and now we can just... So that, yeah, the purifier over there is in cover. But other than that, I should probably just rend the uh, sectoid. Like, does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. There we go. A righteous strike. And I hope I finish this mission because the frame rate is dying again because of all the lost. There we go. Melee vulnerability, so he dies in one hit. And we gain another focus. Back up to max. Um, I could use momentum for, for something else, but right now I'm fine. Let's use the spark unit. No, you know what? I still have a, a shot over here on the... Oh, that's on the purifier now. Well, you know what? I can't do anything else, so might as well fire at the... There we go, we hit him even. So that means that I'm probably going to be able to kill the... Uh... I'm just going to grab the loot with the mech. Um, let's grab the loot with the mech. On the move. With the spark unit. Grab that. He, she can actually grab that. So, Nilirim Core, Superior Autoloader and Eta Kaish. That's really, really nice. And now we turn around and fire at the purifier. Goodbye. Flammo. Oh crap, of course, that triggers another swarm. Never mind. That's fine. I can put Heidi in between that swarm. Holy motherfucking Christ. Um, okay. Uh, that was a bit more enthusiastic than I expected it to be, but there we go. Um, let's just do uh, Kelly over here. Then Heidi's gonna have to reload. And then she can fire at a bunch of them. So she has a, a very high capacity rifle, so I can just start firing away. Okay, for some reason I went to Overwatch there instead of just firing again, but uh Lena can put a parry, uh, Kelly can fire at the lost over here, possibly killing it. Yeah, there we go. And then we can start moving everybody else up, so let's reload her. And move Jacqueline up as well to basically somewhere over here maybe. And give her another overwatch shot. This should be over in a second. Oh, there's more lost. Well, we get another shot from Heidi. Did that kill it? I don't think it will have killed it. No, it has one health left. Fine. I mean, Lena is invulnerable. Heidi can uh, blade storm anything that comes across her path. So this should be fine. I think there's like four or five left. Six, seven, maybe. So they're moving. That's one that goes down. And another one that goes down. They're trying to get around her, but I don't know if they if they cross they cross one of her tiles. So we get another Overwatch shot from Jacqueline over there. And of course we miss because the cannon is inaccurate as hell. Okay. But that should be fine because Lena is in Tony World, so she parries. Oh, she did get damage there. Loot expires, but that's not a problem. Okay, 
So we do, we do get the next turn, which is great. Um, so there's one guy outside with one health, 99%, so I can kill that one with Lena. There we go. We get another shot off on her. Then we can move around a little bit. Um, put Kelly over here, right next to this lost. And start firing away with her. Although she is the highest rank. Wait a second. I'm, I need to give that spark unit some more kills. So let's reload him with the... Her. Her. With the autoloader. Um, and then fire at some of the lost. I should probably move in the middle here. Moving on target. There we go. Moving around. Firing at uh, this one. That's a kill. Then the one in the back there. And then the one right in front of us. There we go. And that's another kill. Great. And then I'll just reload her to uh, make sure she's ready if anything else comes along. But I don't think we'll need to. So uh, Heidi, can you... Oh, you can't actually see that one. That's why you didn't uh, try that the last time. So let's just go... Let's just go in for the kill and shoot him down. So that's look at how many orbs of psionic energy are here. There we go. All stalls are down. Down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Forty-four enemies. So the spark unit was fun, and uh, we met forty-four enemies, which is ridiculous because. If you check the stat screen, um, we actually got seven kills per turn on average. Zombie swarms. Just what we needed. Okay, so we have two promotions, one on Christina and one on the Spark unit. So I'm really curious what those abilities are going to be. Bulwark. Gain a bonus point of armor and always provide high cover to all adjacent squad mates. That is really cool. An adaptive aim when overdrive is active. Standard shots do not incur recoil pen penalties. That is also really, really cool. So he does... It was about 15%, I think, the arm, the aim reduction we got on that second shot. So... But Bulwark is really, really cool. So we get one bonus point of armor and automatically provide high cover. That is just really, really good. So let's just go with Bulwark. And then we have Christina, who finally reaches the final rank of the Sharpshooter tree. We can go either with Serial, a powerful change shot ability. For every kill made with your sniper, your actions will be refunded. She's not really a sniper, but um, we could definitely go for both. But Fanfire is also really cool. Fire the pistol three times at the same target. So that just uh, gives us a... Very, very good DPS on the pistol as well. So Fanfire, of course, because she's the pistol sharpshooter we love to love. There we go. Okay, so that's uh, Operation Hotblade done. And we get a Codex Brain, Lyrium Core, Autoloader, Alien Data Cache, a bunch of corpses, stun uh, of everything we killed. And we're going to go over it in detail. Hello, Commander. And we get 260 supplies on top of all of that. Okay. So that gives us a little bit more leeway supply-wise. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much uh, supplies yet. I'm just going to start scanning. So we got an extra scientist from our covert action. Gertrude was wounded a little bit, but otherwise we just gained experience. And uh, yeah, that's really, really nice. Uh, so there we go. Research time decreased by 13%. And let's assign a new covert action. So we could negate the risk of soldier of a soldier being wounded, but we need a Templar, and of course Lena is out of commission. But we're gonna go for infiltrate the uh, stronghold of the hunter. So the final mission before we can actually attack him. Um, I'm adding Sarah as a, we needed a major or higher, so I put Sarah here because we can get five extra hacking if we get this covert action done, and Elisabetta will accompany her. The soldier wounded chance is moderate, but again, wounds I can deal with, so uh, let's confirm that covert action. And the black market actually opens up again, which is really cool. We do need to spend five days to actually uh, get that, but we'll do that after this. Just like the one we found the commander in. On the surface, yes. But in function... Ah, commander. Excellent. We can begin. 
It is no secret that Advent soldiers possess both human and alien genetic characteristics. Preliminary analysis led me to believe that this was the result of direct modifications made to a pre-existing human host. Prisoners, or perhaps even unwitting volunteers. See your local Advent recruiter today. However, the reality is something else entirely. The Advent troopers at the facility we discovered, including the specimen before you, were manufactured. Each soldier possesses a unique genetic code, predominantly human, of course, but with some fragments left open. Left open for what? Whatever alien DNA Advent wishes to insert. Sectoid, Muton, even the species our soldiers refer to as Berserker. In all cases, human genetic material serves as a bonding agent, holding the strands together. Human material? You mean the stuff we found at the Black Side facility? Precisely. The key component in their soldier manufacturing process. So we've been fighting ourselves this entire time. In a way. But I believe there's more to it than that. The human DNA in this specimen bears one key difference from the entirety of the sequences decoded in the shadow chamber. Psionic sensitivity. Given the sheer volume of strands involved, this cannot be accidental. Screening process at the clinics. Avatar. The potential power of a being created with this template is significant. Central. Had we not intercepted it before the process was completed... I know, Doctor. Continue your research. Let us know if you find anything else. And there we go, one step closer to deciphering what the Avatar project really is. Um, that's that for now. I'm gonna continue the research we were doing at Hello, the uh, research facility, which was well the underway, Archon Autopsy. It will be some time yet before my research is complete. So five days, and after that, we can uh, do plasma lances, and then we get a dark event complete. Resistance informants. The aliens find a mole within the resistance, reducing the retaliation counter by two weeks. Okay, so that means that we're gonna get this immediately. Yeah. Okay, well that was nice of them. So let's view the retaliation site. Notice this quaint little refuge of theirs. And we are dealing with Archons, Chrysalids, Berserkers, Spectres and Codexes. Which is pretty fine and probably also the Hunter. That is, that is okay. So next up, Setting course for Eastern we're Europe. going on our next retaliation mission. Um, that was the Dark Event. The Dark Event just triggered that immediately. Um, which is, yeah, a bit sad, kind of a stupid coincidence of uh, stuff happening at the same time. But look at that, we have our Prime team ready to go if you want to. I'll decide at the beginning of the next episode who we're going to take along on Operation Defiant Druid. But uh, yeah, another retaliation mission, so usually those can be pretty tough. But before we do that, I'm going to take a little break. Thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough. And when we get back, we're going to defend another haven. Thanks for watching and goodbye.